Welcome to my channel. Now I'm doing a timber frame building. I do a lot of timber framing. I absolutely love timber framing. There's so many benefits over traditional masonry, namely how quick they are to manufacture and fit. And also you can really build them up so they're super, super thermally efficient as well. So the existing building here is also timber framed. So a lot of people think timber framed doesn't look like a traditional build. This is exactly that, it's a timber frame building. That's why we're adding on in timber frame two. So the existing timber frame here, which is set behind the cavity, is a frame which is about 25, 30 years old, but it's still pretty good, pretty energy efficient. The new frames we build are 140 millimeters thick, the timber. We have 120 mil PIR inside, have a nine mil OSB sheathing on the outside, which does all of the racking, keeps it all perfectly um, straight and true. And then it's just a matter of stacking panels in onto pole plates or sole plates, if you like, which are mechanically fixed down through the DPC into masonry underneath, which is onto a traditional one meter deep foundation. So it's pretty straightforward. Then we eliminate all of the steel as well. We stick with glue lamp beams here. You can see that these beams are actually going to take the flat roof. So that's the bit we're actually going to concentrate on in this video. We're going to be doing some of the flat roof. And what we're going to be doing is hanging between the glue lambs. So we're going to go from the front wall. We've got a glue lamb over the top of here. We're going to hang between there and here, glue lamb to glue lamb. And then we're going to build out onto the slope of the roof, which is at the back, which actually catches everything. It's really quite straightforward. Now, when I set the building out, I made sure that everything was dead parallel. So all of the joists that come through here are going to be the same length. We haven't got to cut anything individually. We'll have a couple of small timber bearing plates that come across the studs here. So the joist will be less the thickness of that plate there and the same on that end over there. A couple of roof lights to go in as well. These are going to be walkover roof lights. Okay, so they're flat roof, roof lights. They're walkover ones, so they've got really thick glass to enable you to walk over because the idea is on top of this flat roof it's going to be a terrace accessed by the dormers that we built when we did the loft so two two roof lights in here and the final internal glass measurements are a meter square we're going to position them dead in between these glue lambs and we're going to have three equal bits of ceiling which go through that's my first job get up, set them out. Once I've set them out, I'll relate my joists on that side so we can get all of our furring pieces to run through in line if possible and get on with it. So what we've got here is two walkover lanterns. They're exactly the same size and the finished aperture size is a meter by a meter. I'll allow five mil on either side, so a meter and 10 millimeters. Now, to get the position of them, I want to have three bits of ceiling exactly the same. So what I need to do first is work out where my finished wall thicknesses are. So I've marked a line here because it's 25 millimeters off the face of the existing brickwork. And it's about 60 millimeters on the other side where I have a counter batten on the inside of the timber frame and then an insulated plaster ball which gets those thermal values right up as well. Take that overall measurement, and in this case, I use something like an electronic tape. It's really easy to do that. I've got six meters, 660 millimeters. Then I know that I've got two openings at one meter and 10, okay? So I'll just write that down here. So we've got six meters, 660, and we've got two times one meter and 10 openings on the width. So we double that, and that's 2020. We'll take that from that, and that will give us 4640. We divide that by three, so 4640 by three. Um, 15, one, five, one, four, two, call it seven. So 1547, I've just rounded up. And that's the gaps in the ceilings that we get left with. So what I've done is I cut a couple of battens one represents that. One represents 1547. Okay, just check that. 1547. And the other one is the window opening, which is 1010 or 1010 millimeters. So we start then with the first bit of batten on our line, and we're just going to set it out from end to end. And then we know we've got this bits of batten to set it out everywhere. So I'll start over here. First bit of ceiling is going to run from the line here. 
and we're just going to pop a little mark here and we're going to square that up this is where a framing square is absolutely essential so this is the opening so we'll have a joist here in fact we'll have a pair of joists there we'll have a double joist there then we need the first of the openings we'll put this represents the opening and we'll put that from there to here and we'll mark that up so there is my next trimmers use the ceiling measurement again this is obviously the most accurate way because you're not trying to use a tape measure over and over and you can actually physically see that it's actually going to be perfect there that's it and we'll get this across there the next roof light and that should leave me with the same amount of ceiling up to the other side there which is exactly on where i want it to be so you can see then that you've eliminated any of that stacking up measurements you're working to something exactly the same i've now got my positions for the joists which is what we're going to make a pair there and a pair here and i'm going to position the roof lights dead in the middle and how I set that out is I just cut the joists and I mark them on the joists. So the joist that goes here and the joist that goes here, I mark them on. So when I put them in, I've already got the marks. And then I'll put my trimmed joists across, which are going to be the width, 1,010. Fix them together, then I'll square them up. So how our roof works here is we've got these featured Glulam beams. We use Glulam instead of steel as much as we can. And what we have to do is hang directly off the Glulam. We're using a joist which is 175. And before I put this bit of trimming in here, I just sort of show you something really useful. It's just a, it's just a sort of L-shaped piece of ply. One side represents a double and the other side represents a single joist okay so where I've got to put a series of hangers on here now these are the type I have to put on first because the joist is going to hit these if I had the other type that they sent which you can push up afterwards and sometimes I'd attach all the joists and wrap these afterwards where I've got a double like this I'd set this onto my position where I want it mark the underside that's the overall height of the joist mark the back side and that is where I'm going to fix my hanger. So to fix it, I'm going to sight it through, pull it around to the lines and positive placement nailer these nails in. I'll just show you what that is, a PPN nailer. There's the pin on the end and we just... And that actually holds it exactly right. A brilliant tool. And the same here, of course. I'm sighting it through and I'm sighting it up. So let's say I've got all my hangers in. What we then do is when I'm building an aperture or a series of openings, I'll put the inside one in and I'll support it on the other end and then I'll start filling everything in. Now I've got it all marked out on the bench. I'm gonna take you down and show you exactly how I do that. Critical cutting here is really important because of the fact that this is a timber frame so the joists actually hold everything together perfectly parallel and true and sawn timber is not very forgiving. So what I like to do is just use a couple of the joists and build a very simple saw table and that enables me to cut the joists to a stop. So there's the joist length there. I can put the joists in cut them off and I know they're going to be exactly the same then for my trimmers okay so I've got the trimmers are a thousand and ten that's the opening size and again I've got a stop on this side of the saw for those gives me a thousand and ten and then the trimmed joists are about 850 and I've got some of those as well and there's just a mark on the back of the fence here which I offer the timber up to and I can cut them off. So what that means is I've eliminated any repeat measuring. Now how I set those out is quite simple. These are the long joists. 
This is the size of the opening, 1,010 millimeters. I've got a center mark on there. I've centered the joists. I've dropped that onto there. I've popped a pencil mark there and a pencil mark there. I've then used a joist here, popped another pencil mark because we've got a double. The same on the other side. Now that is enabling me now to transfer those onto its opposite one, its pair if you like, get the ends nice and flush, transfer those across, square them off, and then I've got a pair. And because I'm not measuring and repeat measuring, there's less margin for error there. So everything's gonna fit nice and true. Using a large framing square, you can just carry the marks on and you can see everything's really nice and square. And that is it. And then it's a matter of assembling it all on the roof, which I'll do shortly, putting it all together. And they are your trimmed lantern openings. So in that little sped up bit of footage there, you saw me just loosely put all the members in. So there's actually no fixings in, there's the hangers at that end. I've got small bits of batten over the top and also on the trimmers, it's just about to hoon it down with rain. So I need to get out of the rain. It's gonna literally absolutely hoon it down. Um, I'll bring you some more once it stops, maybe in the morning because it's getting late too. So it's the next morning and it's much, much nicer today than it was yesterday. Look at that sky, it's perfect. Right, Eddie, let's get on. Tell us a little bit about how we're doing these joists. So yeah, uh, as Rob mentioned yesterday, we're doing a really simple, we've got a really simple table, which we're cutting all the joists to, um, to make sure everything's the exact same length. So it's just got a few stops. So the process is we'll take a timber off the pile, check it for crown, crown up, mark it, bring it to the saw table, gently put it to our stop at the end, cut it and that's it. There's no measuring, there's no worrying about if it's too long or too short, they're all gonna be exactly the same. And then we stack them along and then just go in at an infill so everything's cut, ready to go. And we can just get it done. 